and beautiful morning to all the faculty members present here. On behalf of IQAC, it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all to second day of faculty development program on techniques of professional English. It is a mark of our undying tradition to evoke the Almighty at the beginning of an important event. Like a great philosopher once said, the function of prayer is not to influence God, but rather to change the nature of the one who prays. Let's begin the session by evoking the blessings of the Lord Almighty. I welcome Ms. S. Bhavadarini and S. Vigashini of 2nd BA English for the same. Ganapati Varavai Arulvai Ganapati Varavai Arulvai Ganapati Varavai Manamuli Meale Dinamunai Tudika Mangala Innisai Navinelodika Manamuli Meale Dinamunai Tudika Mangala Innisai நாவினிலுதிக்க ஏழு ஸ்வரங்களில் நானிசை பாட ஏழு ஸ்வரங்களில் நானிசை பாட எங்குமே இன்பம் பொங்கியே ஓட கணபதியே வருவாய் அருள்வாய் கணபதியே வருவாய் அருள்வாய் கணபதியே வருவாய் Thank you girls. We all feel blessed indeed. I would like to invite Ms. V. Vani Aishwarya, Assistant Professor of English, to formally welcome all. A pleasant morning to one and all present here. It is with great pleasure in the name of the Department of English of Kongu Arts and Science College, I have the honor to you, sir, Dr. D. Devadas, former professor and head, Department of English, Kumaraguru College of Technology, Coimbatore, the management, the principal, my dear heads and colleagues, a warm welcome. I deem it a lofty delight to deliver the welcome address on the day two of the two days faculty development program organized by the internal quality assurance cell on the techniques of teaching professional English. We are grateful to our honorable correspondent, sir, Tirke Parinisami Avagal, for ensuring us abundant opportunity in reconstructing the, the skill sets of the faculty and the students. As chief note of mention for the dynamic personality, our beloved principal, sir, Dr. N. Raman, with whose vibrant spirit spreads a path of light always to us. A warm welcome to our IQAC coordinator, sir, Dr. H. Vasudevan, sir, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Commerce with Computer Applications, who has bagged a lot of experience, nobility, and laurels in his character. A warm welcome to all our cherished heads of various departments, who always take a step forward in guarding in guiding and motivating us in all the endeavors. It is my pleasure to welcome my dear colleagues from various departments who go hand in hand always and who are the beneficiaries of the program. Welcome one and all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your earnest welcome address. Now, I would like to call upon Ms. V. Kanchana, Assistant Professor of English, to introduce our resource person. Good morning to all. I am profoundly delighted to take an opportunity to introduce our praised chief guest. Our eminent resource person, Dr. D. Tevatas, is a former professor and head Department of English, Kumaraguru College of Technology, Coimbatore. He has been in teaching service for 33 years and 12 years of research experience. He has published 20 research articles in various international and national journals. 
sir has published seven books and has guided three phd scholars his areas of interest in training are teaching training soft skills training reading and value education sir has undergone teaching training at tti chennai rie bangalore flu hyderabad anna university chennai he offered training session at business english certification course communication skills orientation and representation courses for the university teachers placement and soft skills he He was a research person for the Academic Staff College of Bardia University, member of Board of Studies in Anna, Amrita, Avinash Lingam, SRC, and shared session at international and various national conferences. Devida Sir is a member of professional bodies like English Language Teachers Association of India, International Association of Teachers of English as a Foreign Language, and Indian Society for Technical Education. i feel privileged to have such a great personality today to have over the session on the topic reading and writing in the techniques of professional english now the session is hand over to you sir thank you ma'am without further ado i request our resource person dr devadas to deliver the keynote address over to you sir A pleasant morning to everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. A pleasant morning to everyone. I would have been very happy to be there in person and make new friends and meet new and make new acquaintances. But then, uh, as you know, the pandemic didn't permit us to do so. Anyway, I am extremely happy to connect with you all virtually, virtually today. At the outset, I would like to thank the management, the principal, the IQAC of Congo Arts and Science College, Erode, for providing me the opportunity to address this webinar today. I am extremely. thankful to dr yasmin head department of english kongu arts and science college for the wonderful opportunity she has given me i would also like to record my gratitude to professor nagaraj head of the department of english bardia university for having given me the chance to be a part of this tanshe project on professional english i think dr anandi has yesterday underlined all the need for professional english and uh, i'd like to focus on uh, today on reading and writing skills communication skills includes all the four listening speaking reading and writing the moment a child is born into the world it cries it says that it has come into the world so it communicates to the world that it has already arrived so communication starts from the time that one one is born into the world Dr Anandi has yesterday touched upon listening and speaking skills and I would continue with reading and writing skills today on professional english I am just a facilitator and uh, it is I can just guide all the faculty here from the various departments on the approaches to professional english it is for you to carry it forward i would like to remind the objectives the outcomes of this professional english which dr anandi had already underlined yesterday to focus on developing students knowledge of domain specific registers and requires 
and the language skills. Okay. To focus on developing students' knowledge of domain specific registers and required language skills. So that with that objective and the outcome in mind, I'd like to start uh, the presentation. But before that, I'd like to remind somebody who had written uh, a message yesterday when Dr. Anandi pointed out that it's going to be, uh, please don't take it as a burden, but please take it as a learning experience. Then somebody wrote, we are not taking it as a burden, madam, but with some fear, we have some fear in taking it. I would say, please do not be apprehensive. Do not have any fear. Fear means, as Dr. Abdul Kalam has pointed out, phase everything and rise. That is what fear is. Phase everything and rise. As uh, Dr. Anandi has laid down, uh, I'd like to follow the same kind of pattern that she had used yesterday. And I'd like to start sharing my screen. Yes, I believe my screen is visible. Yes, is my screen visible? No, sir, it's not no. visible. Just a moment. You let it bear with me because I'm not. Is it, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you. Thank you. I shall go ahead. Okay. So we'll be focusing today on reading and writing. The first part I'd, I'd like to take up is reading. An art or a hobby that has become obsolete today because nobody wants to read. Okay. But then reading is very important because it's a world of gray revolution, which means it is computer world. And in computer terms, we have something called an input and an output. And reading, I would associate reading with input. Without the input, there cannot be the output, which is writing. So reading is very, very important. Reading, as we see, uh, although we have lost the habit, especially the younger generation have lost the habit of reading, but still at workplace, when you are in college, when you are preparing for academics, you will have to read something. Okay. So what are the things that, if we look at any reading passage in any language, it need not be English. Let it be Tamil, let it be Hindi, let it be Malayalam, let it be Gujarati, let it be Bengali. If we look at a passage, we'll find certain things, we get certain details from the passage that we read. The first one is, we know what is the content. What is that passage about? The second one, what is the attitude of the author towards that subject? The third one is, the diction or the style of writing of the author. So three things are evident when we read any passage. The first one is, what is the content? What is the passage about? The second one, the attitude of the author towards the subject that he, is, that he has written. And the third one, the style of writing of the author. Just as we have cinema directors, you look at a movie and you can say whether it is Bhardaraja's movie, whether it is Miskin's movie, whether it is Balachandra's movie, whoever it is, we'll be able to find out. Similarly, with reading also, when you read a text, when you read a passage, 
you will be able to immediately come to terms with that and understand all these things. Now, what we have on the syllabus is reading comprehension passages. Okay. Before we go into that, I'd like to show you Am I, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now for the participants, this is a kind of exercise for all the participants there. I'll give you some five to seven minutes. Something is there on the screen. Could you read that and tell me what, what is it about? There is something described there. And finally, you will have to tell me you can you can unmute and tell me uh, and tell me what actually it is, or you can send me as a message. No problem. Could you read? Please carry on reading. I'll get back to you after five minutes. Please read and tell me what this passage is about. That is the question. Sir, we can't view your passage, sir. Unable to view my passage. Yes, sir. Sir, the front page of the booklet is available. Just. Oh yeah, just a minute, sir. Just a minute, just a minute. Hello? Is it now visible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You may read and then tell me. I'll give you five minutes time. One has to read the entire passage. You can read it any number of times, but tell me what the passage is about. If possible, be specific.
Yes, dear ones, are you ready? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Please. Anyone? Sir, is it about uh, teaching the professional English to our students? Professional English students, okay. Any other answer? Sir, myself, Radha from uh, Vikram City Department, sir. Please, please, uh, ma'am. The passage deals with the procedure of life, sir. And Proceed. it has been arranged into different groups. And okay. somewhere, when we are switching over to different groups, we lack some facilities and complications may occur. Okay. And uh, we, we should uh, accommodate to that and uh, adjust and prepare ourselves for that, sir. Thank you. Congrats. Let's see. Let's see the others. Let's wait for them. A few more. Anyone? You may give a try. Good morning, sir. It's all about uh, things that we have to do. We have to do in life. First, yeah. we have to make uh, the process okay. of doing that. I understand that way. Okay. Uh, your name and department, ma'am? Sir, Vani Aishwarya from English Department. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Any others from physics, mathematics, biochemistry, even Tamil? Okay. Uh, a little task for the faculty of English here. English faculty. I hope you are all there. Yes. yes. Yeah. Could you both, could you be more specific on what it is? More specific on what it is. Can you repeat it again, sir? Can you... Uh, I hope you have read the passage. Now, some of them have given their opinion. One says it's about life. Somebody said it's about professional English. If you are a faculty of English, I'd like you to be very specific about what this passage is about. Not on a general level, but something specific. It's about teaching. Okay. Congrats. Wonderful. I appreciate. And how to teach the methods of teaching. Okay. So not okay. only a specific of a professional English, okay. but other than that. Okay. Is it uh, Madam Vani Ashwarya? Huh? Any, any, any others? Any others can attempt? Anyone who wants, who would like to? Anyway, I'll, shall we get back? Hello, shall we get back? Yes, yeah. See, uh, before we go into that, so this is a passage, especially that's why I said uh, the English people could take up that and try to bring out something specific of what the passage contains. Okay? So it's all very verbose. Okay? So many words have been put here and there just to confuse you. The comprehension, what we want to understand, we are not able to get into the correct idea because of the verbosity of the passage. It, it's full of words. They say, of course, uh, one pile may be sufficient depending on how much there is to do. Otherwise, you're pretty well said. Then they say, at first, the whole procedure will remain complicated. Then they say, then uh, they can put up, uh, put, they can be put into their appropriate places, all that. Okay. But then, if you look at, you have skimmed the passage. 
Now, that's why I said the faculty of English could scan the passage. I believe everyone knows the difference between skimming and scanning. Skimming means reading the passage, finding out, having a general idea about what it is. Scanning is what the doctors do. You go take a CT scan and come so that they will know particularly where the ailment is. So that's what we are trying to do here. It is one is skimming. What I told you, get a general idea that was skimming. Now for the faculty of English, there is one, one or two words which will help you find out what this is. The second, third sentence, if you look at the third sentence, you have one, co of course, one pile may be sufficient, P-I-L-E. The word pile, if you scan the word, if you go through that word, you will find out that it has relevance only to a few things. We say a pile of logs, a pile of books, and a pile of clothes. Isn't it? Yes, sir. We associate the word pile with a pile of logs, a pile of wood, a pile of clothes, or a pile of books. So here the word pile may be sufficient depending on how much there is to do. So this passage, you can come out with these three. The options are logs, books, or clothes. And the answer exactly is, this passage is about hand washing of clothes. You get me? This passage is about hand washing of clothes, nothing else. But then they have confused you using words. Is that clear? Can we proceed to the next one? Yes, sir. Okay. You get me? So we look for particular information. When we look for particular information, we will be able to arrive at the right. That, that's what helps you in reading. When you read, when you start reading, when you understand things, you will be able to pick out the meaning very easily. Okay. That's a confusing passage. Just for the fun of it, I have put it there. I hope everyone there enjoyed reading it. Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to uh, the next one. Uh, for example, we'll have uh, one on... Uh, I'll, I'll go to the text now so that it will be easier for you to understand what it is. I'm going to commerce and management and then I'm going to page 17 there so that you can know what uh, we'll touch upon. A passage which can help us understand about reading and understanding and then comprehending. It will be easier to do that. I'm just scrolling. Bear with me because not I'm not as much uh, computer savvy as you are because I belong to an older generation. Kindly bear with me. Yes, I believe uh, my screen is visible now. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. We have uh, one there from uh, Commerce and Management. This is. Okay. And we have a passage there. What you do is you have been asked to read the passage and then, as usual, to comprehend what you have read. You are supposed to answer the following questions in one or two sentences. Okay. So we, uh, we go through that. Okay. Uh, before that, you have certain words given there. Uh, what are the words uh, you can see? Hive, bark, immune, 4C, passion, apiary, all these words are given there. Students can be given these words to understand their usage in the passage. 
So coming down to the passage, you have the passage there, and then you can ask somebody, as uh, it was even being mentioned yesterday, you can group them. You can group the students, uh, say five or six in a group, and then you can ask one of them to read the passage, reading the passage louder so that the others listen. So listening also comes into play. The one reads, reading also comes into play. Then while reading, the others listen and go through the entire passage. And after that, they try to comprehend the passage and then answer the question. So you have uh, answer the following questions in one or two sentences given there that you just read and then find out what it is. Okay, I'll answer the second question. How does Josephine call her peeps? When you write the answer, please tell your students that they will have to write it in a sentence. No single word answers should be there for a comprehension passage. Here, uh, whether they are writing it here or for a competitive examination where it is of the descriptive type. Okay, so every answer for a comprehension passage should be written in, sentence, in a sentence. So how does Josephine call her bees? Josephine calls her bees as angels. That is the answer. If you read the passage, you'll find out. How does Josephine call her bees? Josephine call her, calls her bees as angels. Okay. Then apart from going honey, what does Josephine emphasize in her talks? See, the first one, it is there, it is easily, we are able to easily find out. But the answer for the third one, apart from going honey, what does Josephine emphasize in her talks? It is, if you read the passage, you'll find out it is Josephine emphasizes through her talks about the use of honey for good health. That is the way you write the answer. Josephine emphasizes through her talks about the use of honey for good health. Okay. Then coming to the next one, we have checking facts and opinion. While reading the passage, you might have noticed that some of the statements are facts, which are accurate or proven, whereas some statements are opinions. Opinions may differ. Opinions are subjective. It is personal. But in facts, they are already proven. It is already there. So some statements are given, which we will have to find out whether they are opinions or facts. For example, the first one, according to the passage, we'll have to read the passage and then understand, comprehend the passage thoroughly, and then come back and try. It. So most people are frightened by bees and fear them. That is a fact. Apiary can be a profitable business if done with passion. That is an opinion by the author, by Josephine. Apiary, the art of bee culti uh, cultivation, that is apiary. Apiary can be a profitable business if done with passion. That is an opinion. That's all. The third one, it is important to pass on the knowledge one has learned to others. Yes, that again is a fact. That, is a, that again is a fact. Then, honey has multiple uses. That also is a fact. So these kind of writing. Okay. Then you have, uh, tell us what you think. There are several mindsets and attitudes about women in business. Give two mindsets of business women that Josephine has broken. Try to use the following expressions while speaking. So that is for speaking also. So you can ask one student to read after dividing them into groups. You can one ask one student to read the passage. The others will listen. And then you can ask the, a few of them to answer these kind of questions, facts or opinions, or short answer questions, or their own opinions as it is given in the third part. So that is how you go about with comprehension. Okay. Uh, mostly we see it is all the same with the uh, the syllabus says most of the same with all the uh, professional English courses. We have seen commerce and management now coming to arts and social sciences, for example. 
we'll go to another page. I believe you have understood what I have said. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. We'll go to the next passage, an example from Arts and Social Sciences. Let us see a passage there so that you will be able to understand things much more better. You have their impact of internet addiction on pandemic and on academic performance. Impact of internet addiction on academic performance. We'll take up this passage and try to analyze. Okay, reading they say, it's given there. Reading and then impact of internet addiction on academic performance. This is from Arts and Social Sciences. It's on page 22 and here you have those words, their vocabulary, addiction, impact, homemaker, utilizing, judiciously, extreme, correlation, distress, crucial, downside. Okay. All these words are vocabulary. You can learn, uh, uh, students can do, learn those vocabulary items. The, the proper way would be not only learning these words which are there, uh, which are given for vocabulary development. It is not enough if they just learn it with their meaning, but you can ask them also to stretch it a little longer. You can ask them to use those words in sentences of their own so that it gets etched into their memory. Okay, that's how we do it. And then uh, we have that vocabulary, find the uh, find contextual meaning of the words taken from the passage. You can use the dictionary for this purpose. Okay. Mariam Webster's dictionary, that uh, app is available on the mobile phone and students can use it to know the meanings of these words. Okay. Then what are the problems the author feels? Uh, internet addiction would lead to. So it could be, uh, the answer could be, the author feels that it could affect academic performance. Number one, problem, uh, the answer will be, what are the problems? The number one will be affect, uh, the author feels that internet addiction would affect academic performance of students. Number two, he feels that the students could lead to, that it could lead to, uh, it could lead the students to psychological distress. The author feels that this addiction, internet addiction, would lead the students to psychological distress. Okay. Similarly, you have facts and opinions. You can differentiate. There we had uh, statements which tell you, and you'll have to just find out whether it is a fact or opinion. But here it is not given. But then I'll give you one or two examples from the passage that is given here. The first one uh, uh, is internet has given voice to common people. That is a fact. Internet has given voice to common people. That is a fact. The second fact is internet addiction affects academic performance. That is in the title itself, it is there. Internet addiction affects academic performance. Then the third one is, it, this is an opinion. You will have to uh, on uh, on the left uh, uh, table, you can write about facts. On the right, you can write about the opinions. Uh, one is you can take steps. Opinion is take steps to not to become an addict to internet. That that could be an opinion. Take steps. One could take steps not to become an addict to internet usage. Okay. 
Internet could also become your best friend if used properly. Internet could also become your first best friend if used properly. These are two kinds of opinions. Okay. Then, of course, you have group work. Do you agree with the author that internet addiction is bad for students in particular? If yes, can you suggest some ways to address this problem? If no, give reasons for your viewpoint. Discuss these in groups and present your findings to the class. Okay. That's, that again could be reading. They could, uh, they could read or they could come up with their own opinion and that could, uh, that could help them speak also. Now we'll go to life sciences. An example from life sciences. I hope the two that I have mentioned, commerce and management and uh, arts and social sciences, I hope people have understood what I have said. Yes? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, shall I carry on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. From English for life sciences. One more example from English for life sciences. Let's look into that professional English for life sciences. Please wait as I scroll along. Have passage one, Professor Har Gobind Quran. Okay. So you can, uh, before you start, we have here pre reading task learning new words and concepts for life science students. What is molecular biology? Has an Indian biologist ever won a Nobel Prize? What is synthetic gene? Okay. Then who is Har Gobind Quran? So the passage is about. This scientist, Professor Hargobind Korana, it is given about his education. The photo, photograph is given. Then uh, was one of the finest, first scientists to demonstrate the role of nucleotides in protein synthesis and help crack the genetic code. He also helped develop custom designed pieces of artificial genes and methods that anticipated the invention of polymerase chain reaction process, a biochemical technology used to amplify a single or a few copies of a piece of DNA. Okay. That's what, uh, and about his education, about his career, then about all that is given, his achievements, and then when he was awarded the Alongside his Nobel Prize, Corona was awarded, uh, Corona was awarded the Louis Gras Howitzer Prize from Columbia University and the Alaska Foundation of Art for basic medical research that's given in the last paragraph. The Willard Gibbs Medal, so many achievements are given there. Now we go to the task. Read the passage and describe any two characteristics of the scientist, Har Gobind Corona. Justify why you consider them as his predominant. <coughs> if you look at as I told you one has to read the passage comprehend the passage understand what it is all the details about his education about his career about his achievements all that and then we come to the questions Discuss in groups and comment on the scientific contribution of scientists in the field of genetic code. Then you have explained Nobel laureate's dedication to the science of gene. Okay. Then, of course, you have facts and opinion. Has he won? Has he ever got the 
Nobel Prize? Yes, in 1968. That is what the passage says. Okay. Sorry for interruption, sir. Yeah, please, ma. Uh, sir, uh, there, there is a link given, sir. Okay, ma. We go to that link and then uh, Google search link is given there, no, sir? Yeah, ma. Yeah. Um, should we go to that link and... Uh, search? No, not necessary, not necessary. That is there. Not necessary at all. You can use this material to teach in class. That will be enough. That is only for listening. If you want, you can use that. And uh, Dr. Anandi was mentioning yesterday that you could use the TED Talks. Enough of them are available on YouTube. So you can use that. If you want, such things are also available on YouTube. But you may not have time. If students have interest in that, they could go into that. You can tell them that this is available. I think people from uh, life sciences will be able to throw more light on that. Okay. But as far as we are concerned, we are sticking to the text and then learning how to comprehend things. Okay? Once they go out, especially life science students, okay? Once they go out and they go into research, once they go into research, they may have to carry on with experiments, write reports, and then comprehend something that has come to them, a statement from somewhere. They will be reading journals. What does the journal say? What is the latest research that, has, that has been going on in the area? So in order to comprehend, we are just giving them an idea through this book. That's all. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Need not go there. After all, we are going to teach them how to do it. We can only give them the net and show them how to fish. It is for them to do it. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we have facts and opinions again uh, to mention one or two. Um, Task to facts interpretation is an internal part. Say about a conviction to work in our country or to work abroad after completing your education. Ask for your friend's opinion and inform the class. Okay. You can ask, you can tell the uh, students, you can uh, say, you can pair work them and ask them to find out where they would like to work here or abroad. And if they are going to work abroad, that's called brain drain. Okay. That's called brain drain. That is after studying here. The next question is, if you see there, it is given, what is your opinion on brain drain? Can you justify the facts that influence the scientists to leave India for better opportunities? Need not be so. You can just tell them uh, uh, to, tell, uh, to talk about brain drain. What is your opinion about brain drain? How are people, why are people going away from India and then doing research abroad and then settling down there? Do you think that is good? Or do you think that people have gone, uh, the students, after getting their degrees, uh, post-graduation, something like that, go in for a research degree in the, in the U.S. or in Germany or in France, and then, then get, they gain it, and then they settle down with a good job there. They never come back to India. That is brain drain. But then you can also ask them whether they are going to settle abroad or whether after a few years of spending, uh, spending a few years abroad, after the research and gaining a good, just as Indira Nui has done, she has come back to India. Yes, right. They settle down here. And now Sundar Pichai is there. It's a brain drain for us. But after some time, he would be coming back to India. So that is not actually going to be a brain drain because he is going to use all his resources here again for our country. So some kind of an opinion can be formed. That is what it means. Then we have uh, match the expressions with their meanings. Okay. It's given there. Uh, uh, some 10 of them are given there. I'll touch upon uh, one or two siblings, children of the same parents. The word is given and then it is jumbled. We find out and write. Okay. It's given as brothers and sisters born to the same parents. They are siblings. Then it's given pilgrimage. It's given pilgrimage in the, in the next box on page 26. The first word is pilgrimage. Journey to a holy place. You're just matching the word with the meaning given. Then similarly for landmark, you have a word on landmark here. Landmark. And then the answer for that is clear and distinct from others. Clear and distinct from others. That is the...
matching. So we have facts and opinions. We have a different task here where we have vocabulary building by matching the words with their meaning. Okay. Then uh, task four, if you look at my favorite scientist, each one can prepare and deliver a one minute speech on any scientist. Okay. Uh, not that I have anything against Dr. Abdul Kalam, but then we should know about other scientists also. Okay. Starting from C.V. Raman or Subramaniam. Okay. Then uh, we have Har Hargobind Kurana. Then we have um, those space scientists. Uh, Satish Dhawan, the guru of uh, Abdul Kalam. You can, uh, you can ask them to collect material on that and then speak out in class. So that will be very effective. They will also come to know about new people, new scientists who are working. We have Shivan there, the, uh, uh, the ISRO chief. Uh, he can also be taken. And then you can uh, tell them, you can uh, talk about Kalpana Chawla. All these people, uh, people uh, uh, the students can talk about. Okay, So that's on life sciences. So now coming to uh, physical sciences, one more, and then uh, we'll wind up with a reading so that we could go to the next one. I hope you have understood. Yes? Yes, sir. Every one of you? Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll go to physical sciences now. This is the book that we had, uh, Anandi, myself, Dr. Asida Fatima, uh, Dr. Muthukumar, uh, Dr. Nagaraj, Dr. Neela Kandan, Dr. Manjula Bashni. We had worked on this book. This is the book that we had come out with. Please bear with me because as I told you, I'm not a very computer savvy. Yes, we have a passage here on the Internet of Things. Okay, uh, we'll go into that. You have short questions after reading that, and you have, uh, before we start with that, we have the Vocabulary also. Here you have fleet, framework, harm, forecast, vital, about the Internet of Things. There is a passage, and then we go into uh, the tasks associated with that passage. The first one is. Pre-stars, new words and concepts. Here. Uh, we have, uh, I believe you know what the Internet of Things is. You use an Android phone, a smartphone, and then we have, uh, you see students are talking about Alexa and Siri. Okay, You just tell them, Siri, call mommy. Yeah, and immediately it calls. Okay, so that that's the kind of Internet of Things. Uh, uh, the se sensor is there; it senses and then sends the message so that the other person talks to you. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, one example of uh, the question that I would uh, like to highlight here, how can governments make use of IoT? It is given there, okay? How can governments make use of IoT, Internet of Things? Government can make use of IoT for purpose of humanitarian relief, for purpose of weather forecast, etc. Okay, that's how you write the answer. Answers have to be in full sentences. Don't tell them that you can write in one word and complete it. That's not the proper way of answering. Okay, because that could uh, lead to ambiguity if you don't write it in full sentence. And then uh, the fourth one, what are the two major concerns while using IoT? One of the major concerns would be the security. In the newspaper today, you have uh, a young boy of a school. If you have read that today, I do not know. A young boy in a school uh, in, in class one has been able to find out security laps in the IRCTC, Indian Railways catering uh, uh, transport service there uh, he has find he has been able to find out a bug and then he has hacked it and says that if he had not found that he it would have been a very great security breach because the person uh, uh, somebody who has done that could have access to the uh, so many so much of details about all the people who have reserved there. He could change the seats for them. He can even uh, ask the uh, catering people to deliver to another passenger if, if, because it has been hacked. The security breach has been there and this boy has been able to find it out and then he has corrected it and brought it to the notice of IRCT people. So that kind of a thing. So security breach is one and you can ask students to go through the passage, read them, understand what it is, and then come back. Okay. So that is, uh, so I think reading uh, helps, as I told you at the beginning itself, these are the kind of passages. The passage is given, different types of questions are given. We have uh, had uh, small uh, short answer questions, we have had facts and opinion, we have had fill in the blanks, all these types are there. You can just use these. You need not go for any other. You can use these and then tell them or you can divide your students into groups and ask them to work on it and come come out with their answers so that you can also reward them with chocolates if they give the correct answer. That's what I usually do in class. Okay, uh, You divide them so that they, they, uh, see one will read, reading is there. The other verses will listen, listening will be there. One will be, uh, there will be you're closely comprehending the passage, so they will be writing it down. So writing is also there. So understanding, comprehension will also there will also be there when somebody reads. So all these four skills can be imbibed through one or two passages like these itself, provided the faculty is a bit, little bit innovative, and students will definitely enjoy that kind of a thing. Of course, there will be noise in class, but then tell them communication means making noise. It is a two-way exchange of information. It is not keeping quiet. So this, uh, there will be a lot of noise in class, but then that will be a constructive noise. That is what we will have to uh, uh, emphasize with others and make them understand the point of view of learning professional English and communicative English. Is it clear? Any doubts over that, over the reading materials or over what I have said on reading? It's very clear, sir. No doubts. Okay. And you can ask, the forum is open. Somebody has a doubt can ask me. Because for me also, it's a learning process. I would have been most welcome. I would have been very happy if I had come there in person to meet you all. But due to the pandemic, unable to do that. If there are any questions, please come up with your questions. I'll try to answer them, but as far as I'm concerned, I think I've been able to do something as far as reading is concerned. And please uh, emphasize the importance of reading and make your students read whatever material is available out of your textbooks also. That's very important.
for example, newspapers, it could be in any language. I don't mean it should be in English. It could be in their own mother tongue. It could be in Tamil, it could be in Malayalam. It could be in Gujarati, whatever language they want. It could be in French. If they know Spanish, if they know German, let them read, no harm. But then uh, let them be used to the habit of reading. That's what we'll have to imbibe in them. Uh, now, if there are no questions or uh, any clarification needed, I'll give you a break and then we will join. It's for you to tell me. Sir, Shall we have a break? Shall we have a break? Or are there any questions? Sir, according to me, if it is uh, in uh, offline, most of the students will react, sir. But in online, all of the students, they are not opening their mouth, sir. I do understand. <laughs> Even in, in a physical class, that sometimes happens. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Any faculty there who has any doubts over what I've been saying so far, you can please interact with me. Because for me also, it is a learning process, as I told you. Or shall we go for a break and then reassemble? Shall we have a break then? Hello? Yes, sir. We can Shall have for 10 minutes, sir. Okay, we'll come back at uh, 11.35. Okay, because sir. Dr. Uh, Dr. Yasmin wanted me to give a break. We'll come at 11.35. Is it clear? Now it's 11.20. So a 15-minute break. Okay. okay thank you then thank you thank you sir 